Farmers are worried about a stink bug invasion. Yes, the invasive species is threatening crops. Lock your doors and close your windows. And stink bugs are back. They're back, invading. those pesky stink bugs. For brown marmorated stink bug, one of the issues that we faced when we began this research project was the fact that we knew very little about this insect, including our ability to monitor the presence of the bug in commercial orchards and other crops, the presence season long, as well as just the numbers that were out there. And so in order to do this, one of the things that typically we do with many um, insect pests is develop monitoring tools. I've been working with the brown marmorate stink bug since 2004. Currently my research focuses on developing sampling methods for this insect. To monitor the brown marmorate stink bug, we use a system of black light traps. Uh, from year to year we have anywhere from 50 to 70 of these black light traps on farms throughout the state. The system was originally created and it is still maintained by our vegetable IPM program, specifically by Chris Holmstrom and Joe Mahar. And it was originally developed to monitor pests of corn. Very early on, Ann Nielsen, who was a former student of mine and myself, realized that these insects are attracted to black lights. And we came up with the idea, well, we have this network, let's try and use that network to try and follow their spread throughout the state. Because of certain aspects of brown marmorate stink bugs biology, we didn't have any species specific monitoring tools available to us. And because it has so many host plants, we couldn't just go out and sample a single plant. The black light traps work um, during the nocturnal flight activity uh, where the insects are flying and they mistake the black light trap for the moon. And so they're intercepted. Since 2004, we've been able to catch over 65,000 brown marmorates in these traps, which equates to a 75% annual increase in the population, and also 2.8 new farms are colonized each year. So it's been a really good landscape level method of identifying the spread and establishment of an invasive species. In working with Cooperative Extension, one of the things we do is the Integrated Pest Management Program. And the idea is you find out what the problem is before you go out there and try and do something about it. We've come a long ways from just spray the heck out of everything until nothing moves. But you have to substitute something for it. And what you can substitute for it is the information about when it's coming, how many will be coming. One of the things our vegetable IPM program has, has done for years with European corn borer and corn earworm is develop statewide maps on a weekly basis that are color coded by density. And so what we decided to do two years ago is since we're collecting the similar data, we can actually produce those maps and we make them available via our Rutgers website. We've got an app as well. And so growers can take a look at that and see where hot spots are. What it's doing is alerting to them. They're in a hot area, they need to be out there looking in their orchards to see if they can find them and if they're causing damage and then do something about it. We are looking at both the biology, the ecology, and behavior of this bug and trying to develop a number of different methodologies for monitoring and managing this insect pest. Through the work of our colleagues at Rutgers, George Hamilton and Ann Nielsen, we knew that they were responding to UV light. So we went on to look at light sources across the visible and invisible spectrum, at least based on our human acuity. And we were able to identify light sources that are very attractive, things like black light, as well as white light sources. A typical white compact fluorescent light bulb is actually very attractive to the bug season long. And the other color that we've seen good response to is actually blue. It's a shorter wavelength in terms of the visual spectrum but less attractive to what we call non-targets, things like moths and beetles and flies that we really don't want to sift through when we're looking for brown marmorated stink bugs. In terms of the trap design itself, we're looking at a visual stimulus that this bug will respond to. And what we found is that the color black is the most visually stimulating. We think this is because the bugs actually respond to that stimulus based on the fact that it's a tree mimicking stimulus. The bugs often use woody host tree species as a place where they feed and mate and reproduce and so it's probably a good visual cue for them. So we use that as the base trap design. 
And then we also use odors. And in this case, what we've been able to do recently is identify the aggregation pheromone of brown marmorated stink bug. Aggregation pheromones are pheromones that attract both males and females, and in this case, nymphs as well. In 2010, I confirmed that the brown marmorated stink bug was on my farm. Since then, I've had the USDA on my farm. We've been doing light traps. We've been doing pheromone traps anything we can to get a handle on it. And as a farmer, we need tools to monitor the population. If these tools are refined, maybe I'm gonna have better things in my toolbox in order to fight this battle. And that's what they're looking for and that's what I need. Without their knowledge and without the work that they've been doing, I don't think that I would be nearly as close to a solution. So what we're trying to do now that we have attractive pheromonal stimuli that we can use, a trap design that's, that is good at capturing the bugs, is to develop thresholds. And a threshold essentially is a, a concept where a grower can look in his trap and see that there are, say, five stink bugs in that trap in one week. That tells the grower, are there enough stink bugs in that trap that the grower should think about perhaps treating that orchard, or there aren't enough to warrant that kind of management decision. Ultimately, what we want is a simple solution for a grower where they can have confidence that their crop is protected.